We've been taught as a society to always go hard when it comes to cardio. For example, if you're not pushing yourself, if you don't get yourself to a point where you're completely exhausted, the belief is that you're doing yourself a disservice. You're basically lazy. The workout doesn't count. That's why you see a lot of well-meaning weight loss enthusiasts grind away on their favorite cardio machine every day. Or maybe you're someone who goes for a run or a jog seven days a week and you think that that's moving you towards your weight loss goals. But what if I told you that less is actually better, specifically less in intensity when you do cardio. And if you slow it down, aka just go for a brisk walk, it could actually be more beneficial, especially if your goal is to just lose body fat, have that tight and toned look, and just improve your overall health. Walking is the way to go. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use walking to lose body fat, but more importantly, keep it off. My brother is one of my favorite recent examples of team walking. He already lives a pretty healthy lifestyle, but he just added getting 10,000 steps every day to his normal routine. And after 12 weeks, he's 11 pounds lighter and he's dropped two inches around his waist. Talk about a great return on his investments. These are also the exact same tips that I give to all my students and they've all gone to see some pretty amazing results. So you know it works. Before we get started, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video every week. So a lot of people's lifestyles by default is just not very active. And I used to be guilty of this lifestyle. I'm an entrepreneur, so I spend a lot of my time just sitting in my computer. And this is also true if you're a student or you're someone who works a nine to five desk job. The average American, for example, only gets about 4,000 steps every day. That's not a lot. The average American is also overweight. There's definitely a correlation there. But this mostly sedentary lifestyle that's kind of been the norm over the last few decades goes against how we evolved as human beings. We're also in the midst of an obesity epidemic Go figure. Because we evolved as human beings to move. Otherwise, you'd be a tree. That's one of my favorite sayings. Our Paleolithic ancestors regularly walked five miles every day, which translates to about 10,000 steps. That's why getting 10,000 steps spread throughout the day is such a magical number because it brings a boatload of benefits along with it, like increased fat burning metabolism. It strengthens your heart. It improves digestion. It lowers your blood sugar levels. It improves insulin sensitivity. And I talk a lot about the importance of moderating your insulin levels on my channel you want any chance of losing weight and improving your health. Walking also eases joint pain. It boosts your immune function. It also boosts your energy. It improves your mood. It can tone your legs. It helps with recovery from your workouts. And it can help clear your head and help you think creatively. It basically promotes optimal gene expression. And walking is, um, how do I put this? free. Walking helps everyone. It brings a boatload of benefits no matter what your goal is. And I talk about the science and little intricacies of walking in this video, like how to calculate your maximum aerobic heart rate to make sure that you're always in the fat burning zone whenever you go for a walk. So make sure you check that out. By comparison, a sedentary person may only average a thousand to three thousand steps every day. And if your typical day consists of walking to your car, driving to work, walking to the bathroom, driving home from work, and just general movement around the house, like walking back and forth to the fridge to grab food. That is the definition of a sedentary lifestyle. That amount of inactivity increases your risk of developing chronic disease by tenfold. This is important because a lot of people who live a sedentary lifestyle are either overweight or obese. They're extremely heavy, they're out of shape, they feel hopeless because they're embarrassed to go to the gym, they can't run because their joints hurt, they're limited to how much they can move their bodies, and all they can really do is walk. Guess what? That's actually an unbelievably efficient way to get started towards your health and weight loss goals. And the barrier of entry is non-existent. All you have to do is literally get your butt off the couch and start moving, which drastically increases adherence. Like it's so much easier to just get out of the house and go for a walk rather than drive to the gym. The question then becomes, how do you incorporate walking as part of your daily life? Because we're all busy. We've all got stuff to do. I get it. We always say, oh, I just don't have time, which is actually step number one. Specifically set aside time for walking. We're all given the same 24 Four hours every day. Some spend it more wisely than others. Personally, my health is my number one priority. I value it above all else. And when I found out about all the benefits that walking brings, but more importantly, the negative health consequences of living a sedentary lifestyle, it became a complete no-brainer to integrate walking as part of my daily routine. It's basically the minimum effective dose when it comes to getting out of a sedentary lifestyle. And it's so easy because again, the barrier of entry is non-existent. You don't need a gym membership to walk. You just need to walk. I personally set aside 60 minutes of my day solely dedicated for walking. And I usually break that up to at least three separate walks, one in the morning. So when I wake up, I meditate, then I make coffee, and then I bring that coffee when I go for my morning walk. Then I go for my second walk at noon. I only eat once a day, so I go for a walk at noon instead of eating. And then I go for another walk sometime in the afternoon whenever I take a break from work. But that's the minimum. Sometimes I go for more walks. It's so effective that even if it's just a five minute walk, you'll immediately feel better. Ideally, for every hour that you're working, you want to move around for at least five 
five minutes. You can stretch that out to one every two hours, but then you have to move for 10 minutes. And you always come back from these walks with more energy. You always feel better. It basically revives you from the monotony of the day. And if you're wondering how you can carve those 60 extra minutes, we can start with the one thing that's been one of the biggest contributors to this unhealthy sedentary lifestyle that a lot of people are stuck with, your phone time. For example, the average person struggles to go little more than 10 minutes without checking their phone. Don't believe me? Go to your phone right now and check your screen time you're gonna be mortified. Now, I'm not saying that you should never check your phone, that's just not practical, but if you just check your phone a little less, you'll definitely find time to go for a walk. By the way, for safety purposes, don't be one of those people who are on their phones while they're walking and they're not even looking where they're going. I've seen so many near miss accidents from people just not paying attention where they're going. Number two, you can take your calls while you're walking. This is easily one of the best ways to get in more steps without disrupting your schedule too much. I always make a point to take my calls while I'm walking. It's honestly, a match made in heaven because you've already set aside time to take that phone call. Why not pair it with something that doesn't take away from it, like walking? I also find that it also gets me in a state of flow and it actually helps me concentrate better. And it's most likely because of the increased blood flow throughout my body. Number three, you can learn while walking. If you're someone who values personal development and you've set aside some time to read a book, for example, and this is easily one of my favorite habits that I've adapted into my life because it's made such a big difference. My only wish is I wish I started sooner. Why not learn while you're walking? I switched from reading a physical book to listening to audiobooks while walking and it's literally changed my life. I don't know why I just did that when I said audiobooks. I went from reading one book a month to consuming one or two books a week. My favorite app for this is Audible, but there are other apps out there and there are tons of free audiobooks you can download. You can also listen to podcasts. All you really need is a pair of headphones. Number four, turn walking into social time. I'm a big proponent of living an intermittent fasting lifestyle and using it as a health tool with the side effect of weight loss. And I talk about it extensively on my channel, so make sure you check out my other videos about it, especially if you're new. I also don't drink, so I have to come up with creative ways and plan my social life around other things that doesn't always involve eating or drinking. The solution? Walking. It's honestly been one of my go-to date activities recently, or just something that I do with friends rather than going for coffee. Or we meet up for coffee initially and then we go for a walk. It's so much more engaging because it's a shared experience, you're moving around, all your senses are being engaged, it's so much easier to make conversation because you're changing your scenery and you can notice your surroundings, which gives you more talking points. You don't have these awkward silences where you're just staring at the wall or each other. And if you're on a date, it's so much easier to initiate physical contact when you're walking because you're side by side. This I'm not a dating coach, but it works pretty well. Number five, use a walking companion. I'm gonna throw in this tip because of my love for dogs. If you have a furry friend at home, be a good owner and take your dog out for multiple walks every day. Your dog's life literally revolves around this activity. If you don't have a dog, you can take your neighbor's dog out for a walk. They'll love you for it. You can also volunteer at an animal shelter and take the dogs out there for a walk. Better yet, you can foster a dog. Just think about it this way. You haven't really lived until you do something good for someone who can never pay you back. Number six, substitute walking for scheduled meals. I mentioned earlier that I go for a walk first thing in the morning and you might be wondering how do I have time for that? It's because I don't eat breakfast. I live an intermittent fasting lifestyle where I just eat in a compressed eating window because breaking news, meal times are completely made up. That in itself, not worrying or thinking about food for most of the day will free up so much of your time to go for a walk and generally be more productive. But the more pressing thing here is that if you have metabolic syndrome and the most recent stats show that 80% of American adults have some form of metabolic dysfunction, research has shown that walking is twice as effective for treating high blood sugar as prescription drugs like metformin. This is especially true if you do multiple walks throughout the day, like multiple 10 minute walks rather than one long one at the end of the day. Number seven, integrate walking as part of your lifestyle. So I live in a high rise building and it always blows my mind whenever I see people take the elevator when they're going one or two floors up. Like why? Sometimes it takes twice as long when you wait for the elevator rather than just taking the stairs. Unless you're injured or you're physically unable to walk up a flight of stairs, that's just laziness. You can walk to the gym if it's within walking distance from your house. Walking is a great warm up for your workout. When you're working out, walk in between sets. Don't just sit down scrolling through your phone in between sets. This is why people's workouts take twice as long these days. They're mostly on their phones, again, adding to that screen time. So less Instagram, more walking, and more lifting. If you're shopping, don't be one of those people who drives around for 10 or 15 minutes looking for that spot right next to the entrance because all the spots that are a little bit further away are always open. If you have a treadmill at home, don't just let it collect dust. Get on it while watching TV. If you have the option to get a stand-up desk at work, 
do that. This also helps with your posture. The term sitting is the new smoking is a little bit exaggerated, but it's honestly not that far off. Sitting is a disease and walking is the cure. Did you know that standing for three hours every day instead of sitting has the equivalent calorie consumption benefit as running 10 marathons a year? Mind blowing, right? If you're traveling and you're on a layover, walk around the airport. It's a great way to help pass time. Go for a walk after dinner or better yet, after every meal. Walking after a meal has been shown to increase insulin sensitivity by up to 30% and it lowers the blood glucose response by up to 50%. Mind blowing stats and the faster you can regulate blood glucose and insulin, the faster you'll lose weight. So if you find ways to integrate walking as part of your life, it eventually becomes a habit. It becomes something that you do. It basically becomes like brushing your teeth and all these little changes add up to staggering results over time. Number eight, pair walking with other supportive lifestyle choices. This is kind of big picture here, but think of walking as just one of the many tools in your health and weight loss toolbox. But you can't just depend on it to lose weight. You also want to make sure that you're getting adequate and quality sleep. Make sure you're managing your stress levels. And walking is an unbelievably powerful way to lower stress, by the way. It's just so relaxing. It's basically like active meditation. You also want to make sure that you're doing some form of resistance training at least a couple of times a week. But most importantly, you also want to make sure that you're dialing in your nutrition. You want to revolve your diet around plants and animals. Make sure you're eating a diet that mostly consists of single ingredient, mostly in processed, nutrient-dense foods. And again, you don't have to get your 10,000 steps all at once. It's way better if you spread it throughout the day. And start slow on this. Just start with a 10-minute walk and increase the frequency from there. If you combine all these supportive lifestyle choices and get your 10,000 steps every day by integrating all the tips I mentioned in this video, it's gonna change your life. You're gonna lose all the weight, your health will improve, your clothes will fit better, and you're gonna be a lean walking machine. The next question then becomes, how are you actually supposed to eat if you wanna lose weight? Because here's the thing, 80% of your body composition is determined by your diet. You can't just freestyle this part. Do you have a proven plan that you can follow? To help you with that, I wanna give you a free copy of my Lean Body Blueprint. This is how I melted all the fat around my stomach without depriving myself of my favorite foods or wasting hours at the gym. It's a simple four-step process specifically designed for busy professionals and it's the exact same blueprint that I teach to all my private coaching clients and they've all gone to see some amazing results. If you want to be the next success story, then download your free copy of the Lean Body Blueprint right now. There's going to be a link somewhere at the top here or in the description box. Just click on it, type in your email, and I'll send it to you right away. All right, that's all I've got. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post a new video every week. And hey, leave a comment below if you have any questions about this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. First, a high five.